Hi guys, in today's discussion of the book How I Became a Hindu by Sita Ram Goel, we discuss Ram Swarup's views of Islam. We are in the last chapter called Nightmare of Nehruism and this is almost at the end of the book. As our discussions developed, I found that Ram Swarup was concerned more about the menace from Islam than that from Christianity, which as we know now in 2022 that Ram Swarup probably got it wrong because as if you have read J. Sai Deepak's book and if you read news and if you see population dynamics, uh, Christianity plays a more subtle and uh, subtle game and in a more stealth mode. So no opposition uh, comes up uh, in front of Christianity. But since Islam only most of the time uses violence and loud words, therefore they are met with opposition more easily. As our discussions developed, I found that Ram Swarup was concerned more about the menace from Islam than that from Christianity. He observed that Christianity had its teeth knocked out in the modern West and that though it was still capable of doing considerable mischief in India, it was bound to collapse as soon as its rationalist view in the West became known to our people. Well, Ram Swarup got this wrong as well. Uh, they, they got their teeth knocked out in the West. but. Our leftists won't let Christianity go away. Islam, on the other hand, had so far remained free from even a rationalist review. Hindu saints and scholars had hardly ever questioned its exclusive and superior claims. The only exception was Swami Dayananda. In recent times, the Hindu refrain had been... By recent times, he means 1993 because he is writing this chapter in 1993. The only exception was Swami Dayananda. In recent times, the Hindu refrain had been that Islam taught the same truths as Hinduism. The slogan of Sarva Dharma Samabhava was providing grist to the mills of secularism, the smokescreen behind which Islam and Christianity were stealing a march. Add to it the systematic distortion of India's history which the Stalinist historians of Aligarh and the JNU had undertaken from their power positions in the <coughs> Nehruvian establishment. They were insisting that Islamic heroes be accepted as national heroes, while they were converting Hindu heroes into villains. Ram Swarup was not satisfied with a merely rationalist review of Islam and Christianity. He wanted these ideologies to be processed from the point of view of yogic spirituality of Sanatana Dharma, because he was a big fan of Aurobindo Ghosh. And he had developed in the framework for placing these creeds where they belonged in the scale of yogic consciousness. Our problem, according to Ram Swarup, was not Muslims but Islam. An overwhelming majority of Muslims in India, including Afghanistan, Pakistan and Bangladesh, were our own people. They had been alienated from us by Islam, but Hindu society had remained preoccupied with the, with the Muslim behavior pattern, while bestowing praises on Islam as a great religion. This is, uh, this, in this part, Ram Swarup is absolutely right. This was suicidal for Hindu society. The Muslim behavior pattern had to be traced back to the belief system which sanctioned it. It was the belief system which had to be exposed. This is what Sanjay Dikshit does in his channel, The Jaipur Dialogues. Hope you guys follow his channel and hope you guys have read his book, Unbreaking India. I have that book, I haven't read it yet. And someday soon I'll make a video on that after I'm done reading it. He has tremendous research in Islam and he has tremendous research uh, in the entire Middle Eastern region, the history of that region. A marked feature of the Muslim behavior pattern had been that Muslim proneness to take on the streets on the slightest pretext, which we called the street veto, which is basically going away now, finally. Maybe it will come back someday, but for now it's almost gone. Uh, not in Bengal, but <laughs> in the rest of the country. Street riots had been used by Islam as a major weapon for carving out Pakistan. They were being used in, in, in the India that remained for enforcing. They were being used in the India that remained for enforcing all sorts of Muslim demands. And street riots by Muslims cannot be stopped unless Islam was cured of its aggressive self-righteousness. Hindus were doing exactly the reverse of what should be done. They were blaming the Muslims and not Islam, which provided the inspiration for street riots. Ram Swarup was sure that the only effective way to stop street riots was to move the Hindu-Muslim dialogue from the streets to the level of human minds. That was possible only if Hindus studied Islam from its own sources and rejected its claims. This is also something Sanjay Dikshit keeps, <coughs> keeps saying and keeps propagating and repeating. So long as Hindus recognized Islam as a religion, it was unlikely to shed its aggressiveness and accept peaceful coexistence. We had the precedence of Christianity and communism before us. 
Christianity in the West had to shed its self-righteousness, self-righteousness and reform itself when it was subjected to a free and frank discussion in modern times. The ideological spread of communism also had come to a halt in the Western democracies when Western scholars examined its tenets and made them known to the people at large.